Ladies and gentlemen, the Railroad Hour. And here comes the summer show train. The Association of American Railroads, the same railroads that bring you most of the food you eat, the clothes you wear, the fuel you burn, and all the other things you use in your daily life, brings you the Railroad Summer Show Train, transcribed, starring Gordon McRae, and featuring Lucille Norman, with the music of Carmen Dragon and the orchestra, script by Gene Holloway, and the choir under the direction of Norman Luboff. And now, here is our star, Gordon McRae! <laughs> Thank you, Marvin Miller, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Tonight, we're going to ride the summer show train back through time and memory to another year that you lived yesterday. Tonight's destination, the year 1938. Nineteen thirty-eight, a year that you lived yesterday. It was the year of the bingo craze, and California had an influx of people from the Midwest fleeing from the Dust Bowl. And the most delightful thing in pictures was Walt Disney's full-length feature in color, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. It wasn't long after its opening that almost every child and adult in America could sing that gay and delightful song of the dwarfs, Hi Ho. <laughs> Hi ho, hi ho, to make your troubles go. Just keep on singing all day long. Hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho, hi ho. For if you're feeling low, you positively can't go wrong with a hi, hi ho. We dig, 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 dig in a mine the whole day through. To dig, 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 dig is what we like to do. And while we sing, we always sing Cause when you dig, there ain't a better thing Than a tune, than a tune You can play so long, can Hi-ho, hi-ho It's home from work we go Hi-ho, 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 hi-ho Hi-ho, hi-ho All seven in a row You positively can't go wrong As long as you sing hi-ho Make your troubles go Just keep on singing all day long Hi-ho, 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 hi-ho For if you're feeling low You positively can't go wrong With a hi, hi-ho Nineteen thirty eight was the year the King of Albania married a Hungarian countess. It was the year the King of Egypt was married at seventeen to the daughter of a commoner. And the year Henry Ford and his wife celebrated their fiftieth wedding anniversary. January 31st, an historic event took place in the Netherlands. A daughter was born to Crown Princess Juliana and Prince Bernhard of the Netherlands, and she was named Beatrix Wilhelmina Armgard, Princess of Orange Nassau. You must have been a beautiful baby. You must have been a wonderful child. When you were only starting to go to kindergarten, Yes, there are many things to remember in 1938. They passed a law in France eliminating the word obey from the civil marriage ceremony. 
and General John J. Pershing had what they feared might be a fatal illness. And Walter Houston was appearing in Knickerbocker Holiday on Broadway. And in the show was a song destined to become a classic. Oh, it's a long, long while From May to December But the days grow short When you reach September undercurrents in 1938, undercurrents and warnings of danger. It is March 14th. You're in Washington, D.C. Secretary of State Cordell Hall has just finished greeting the German ambassador. Mr. Secretary, Germany wishes to notify the United States that the nation of Austria has ceased to exist, and the German Reich will take over all the Austrian diplomatic establishments in this country. Yes, the air was full of danger. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. On October 1st at 2 p.m., German troops crossed the German-Czechoslovak frontier in the Bohemian Forest. And while the stormtroopers moved deeper into Czechoslovakia, Chancellor Hitler spoke to the world from Saarbrücken. His message, as follows. As a strong state, we are ready at all times to embark upon a policy of understanding with the world about us. We want nothing from others. We have no wishes or demands. We want peace. But the memories of 1938 are not all memories of lies and marching feet and cannon. There was beauty to the year. There was laughter. And there was music. 
And on Broadway, the incomparable team of Rogers and Hart had a great hit show, I Married an Angel. Remember? Have you heard? I married an angel. I'm sure that the change will be awfully good for me. Shall I marry to heaven? She's carried this fellow with a kiss. He is sweet and gentle, so it isn't strange when I'm sitting. This is a report to you and to all other thinking Americans on the readiness of your railroads to meet transportation needs of the nation in emergency. One thing to bear in mind is that in emergency, the railroads do not have such problems of plant conversion as manufacturing industries must face. The same cars and engines, the same plant and equipment carry either war munitions or peace supplies, or both. So with relatively small additions to the plant and equipment they had at the beginning of the Second World War, the railroads were able to meet all demands upon them, carrying more than 90% of all war freight, more than 97% of all organized military travel. They did this largely through the greater utilization of the railroad plant which war conditions made possible. They had the invaluable aid of the shippers' advisory boards and their car efficiency committees. They had the cooperation of government agencies. And both industry and railroads were working full six-day weeks or even seven-day weeks. Today, the railroads have a better plant than they had when war began in Europe in 1939. They have better locomotive power than they had then. They have more cars, and they are bigger cars, stronger and better. They have better tracks and terminals, better shops and signals. In short, better railroads as the result of the expenditure of more than $7 billion on improvements in the past 10 years. In emergency, the same methods of stepping up the utilization of railroads 
which produced such results in World War II, can be and doubtless would be applied to the better railroads we have today. And no doubt the railroads would be given opportunity to secure the manpower and materials they would need both for their operations and their maintenance and repair so that the strength and capacity of railroads would grow with the growth of national production and national strength. So to sum up, the railroads report ready, ready to meet the transportation needs of the nation in emergency. And now, back to Gordon McRae, Lucille Norman, and the summer show train's trip to the year 1938. My dear Mr. Shane, again I'll explain, it means you're the fairest in the land. 1938, a year that you lived yesterday. Benny Goodman played New York's Paramount Theater with his hot band and almost caused a riot. The kids danced in the aisles, and some of them danced right up on the stage. The Big Apple was the popular dance in the early part of 38, and Brenda Frazier was the glamour deb of the year. The quintuplets were four and a half years old on November 9th, and they celebrated the occasion by having their tonsils out. Small fry strutting by the schoolroom. Small fry should be in the schoolroom. You ain't a grown-up high and mighty yet. And in 1938, one of our biggest song hits was a ballad that said, I love you in a slightly different way. You go to my hand And you linger like a haunting refrain And I find you spinning Like the bubbles in a glass of champagne You go to my head Like a sip of sparkling burgundy brew And I find the very mention of you Like the kicker in a julep or two The thrill of the thought that you might give a thought to my plea Casts a spell over me Still I say to myself, get a hold of yourself Can't you see that it never can be? Your eyes like a summer with a thousand Julys. You intoxicate my soul with your eyes. Though I'm certain that this heart of mine hasn't a ghost of a chance in this crazy. Between the radio commentators and the headlines from Europe, life went on at an approximation of its usual pace. There were the same pleasures and the same little aggravations. Uh, Dear, there's the most interesting thing here in the paper. I don't know why it is. The minute I sit down to read my paper, you start twittering at me. Twitter, 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 twitter. Uh, There's a woman in Scotland who's chief of an entire clan. And there couldn't be any men in it. There are two men in it. Then they're mice. That's what they are, mice. I think you're awful. Will you read your paper and let me read mine? I don't know why I ever got married. 
Why, you said you'd kill yourself if I didn't marry you. I wasn't myself that summer. You should never listen to me. I just dare you to give me a choice like that again. I just dare you. I double dare you to sit over here. I double dare you to lend me your ear. There were a lot of wonderful songs that year. And in the show called Right This Way, you first heard one that was revived just last year and became an even greater hit than it was in 1938. I can see no matter how near you be, you'll never be long to me. But I can dream years back into time and memory. One of the biggest hit ballads of the year, or any year, was Music Maestro, Please. It was the year you were talking about Dr. Francis Townsend and his old age plan. It was the year Orson Welles made his celebrated War of the Worlds broadcast that started a panic all over the country. The year Joe Lewis knocked out Max Schmeling in the first round in Yankee Stadium, New York. There is much to look back on in 1938, much to remember, in world events, in home events, in entertainment, and in music. One of Dick Rogers and Larry Hart's most popular ballads came out that year in their new musical, The Boys from Syracuse, a song that is still as much of a favorite today as it was then. Falling in love with love is falling for making. Falling in love with love is playing the fool. Trust is just for children in school. 
was unwise with eyes unable to see. I fell in love with love with love everlasting. But love for joining us. In just a moment, I'll tell you what we have in store for you next week. The Summer Show Train is written by Gene Holloway and brought to you each week at this time by the American Railroads. In times like these, it's mighty good to know that our railroads are better prepared than they were when the Second World War began. Yes, the railroads are ready, ready to meet America's transportation needs. <laughs> singing smiles back in the years from 1915 to 1920, and next week the summer show train is going to take you on a trip to that era to relive some of its most interesting happenings and hear many of its greatest songs, songs like Thine Alone, I'm Always Chasing Rainbows, and Will You Remember? So folks, be sure to join us again next Monday and ride with us aboard the summer show train back to the years from 1915 to 1920. Board? Well, it looks as though we're ready to pull out. So until next week, goodbye. <laughs> Tonight's performance of the Railroad Hour was transcribed in Hollywood. Gordon McRae is currently starring in the Warner Brothers Technicolor Western, The Return of the Frontiersman. And now for Lucille Norman, Carmen Dragon and the Orchestra, the Norman Luboff Choir, and our star, Gordon McRae. This is Marvin Miller with a hearty invitation from the American Railroads to join us again next week and ride the summer show train back to the years from 1915 to 1920. And now stay tuned to your Monday night of music on NBC. Enjoy the voice of Firestone with Mimi Benzel on NBC.